Unless you're really paying attention, Stripe can almost seem like a conspiracy. It's everywhere, but not always in plain sight. Stick around to find out what Stripe is and how it works. The truth is Stripe is a full stack payment processor, which is a fancy way of saying that it serves as both a third party payment processor and a payment gateway. What this means is that Stripe allows your business to process credit and debit cards, as well as automated clearinghouse, ACH transactions, both online and offline. And Stripe was founded in 2010 and powers the transactions of some of the biggest brands out there, including Lyft, Under Armour, Blue Apron, and Pinterest, you know, small brands. In fact, the company claims that 89% of all credit cards have been processed on a Stripe network at some point with the ability to handle 135 currencies. It's a common solution for companies that do business internationally. Stripe has a tremendous amount of potential power under its hood, but not every business will have the resources or the need to make use of everything it can do. So now let's take an in-depth look at how Stripe works and what it can offer your business. But before I get started, don't forget to click that subscribe button, hit the alert button to be alerted every time we publish new content here on the Merchant Maverick YouTube channel. The simplest way to think of Stripe payments is as a payment processing platform. It allows you to transfer money from your customer's bank account into your business bank account by way of a credit or debit card transaction. Stripe can be used for all kinds of transactions, but odds are you're considering it because you're looking for an e-commerce solution. So let's dig into how Stripe works in an online retail setting. To process online transactions, you need both a payment gateway and a payment processor. The gateway securely captures and transmits the customer's credit card payment information to the processor, which then actually processes the transaction. Funds from the customer's bank are then temporarily routed to a merchant account. In the case of Stripe and other third-party processors, it's an aggregated account. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. The payment is then routed to the merchant's bank account. Without diving into all the details, it's actually a lot more complicated than that. But for our purposes, this works as a general overview. So Stripe does both. It combines gateway functionality and payment processing, making it a convenient way to handle e-commerce, although not necessarily the cheapest way. Let's take a look at how Stripe makes it happen. Stripe bills itself as a developer-friendly solution that solves problems with elegant code. Stripe's online developer resources are certainly impressive, and unlike many of its competitors, they're completely public, so you can get a sense of the work involved in setting it up. You'll need two pairs of keys to use Stripe's REST, R-E-S-T API, one for testing and the other one to go live. You can find them in your Stripe dashboard under Developers API Keys. You can toggle between live and test keys once your account is activated. Stripe plays nicely with popular server-side languages and frameworks with particular care given to Ruby, Python, PHP, Java, Node.js, Go, and .NET. The minimal setup for Stripe is actually pretty simple and if you're using a pre-built checkout like Stripe Checkout, it's probably manageable for developers with limited experience. We're talking less than 15 lines of code to test the API call. That's literally nothing. The first thing you'll need to do is install the language appropriate Stripe library. You can do this with package managers like NPM for Node.js, PIP for Python, etc. From there, it's just a matter of setting your API keys and creating an object containing your payment intent with properties for amount, currency, payment method, and the email address the receipt will be sent to. If you're successful, Stripe will return an object containing transaction details. And from here, Stripe stops holding your hand quite so tightly and instead offers a few different paths you can take to build an e-commerce page or in the case of Stripe Checkout, integrate into your own page. The guides are all as concise as the basic setup guide with plenty of code snippets and links to other relevant parts of the Stripe docs. If you don't wanna start from scratch, you can clone one of many existing boilerplate projects from GitHub. So did you find yourself nodding off through all of that? Very understandable. Not everyone codes and not every business has access to a developer. While Stripe itself is developer focused, there are ways to work it into your payment processing pipeline without having an in-house tech team. 
The two most basic ones are for you to contract with one of Stripe's partner developers and use a pre-built e-commerce solution that supports Stripe integration. You'll see a lot of familiar names if you consider the second option. Let's use WooCommerce as a case study. The exact process with other integrations may be a little bit different, but the big commonality is that you'll need to enable Stripe via two keys provided by the processor. WooCommerce exists both as a standalone WordPress theme and an integration that can be plugged into other WordPress themes that can enable e-commerce functionality for those particular themes. But you gotta make sure you've installed WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway plugin. Once you have, you'll find the necessary settings under WooCommerce settings in your CMS sidebar. Click over to the checkout tab and then look for the Stripe submenu link. You'll then have the option to enable or disable Stripe and make custom fields for your shopping cart. At this point, you can enable test mode to try out the test credit card numbers provided by Stripe. You'll need your test secret key and test publishable keys to do so. If you disable test mode, the plugin will instead ask for the live versions. From here, there are a few options you can enable or disable to your taste, including the ability to automatically capture credit card information or have to manually authorize it. Be careful though, you have a limited window to do so. You can use Stripe Checkout's pre-built fields and assets, enable Apple Pay, enable payment via safe cards and set languages. But note that card data is saved to Stripe servers, not yours, which should be a relief to you for security reasons. And that's about it. You can start accepting e-commerce payments with Stripe right away. While this kind of setup doesn't involve any coding, be aware that you'll still need some familiarity with navigating your website, CMS, and sub menus. Luckily, most of the bigger pre-built shopping carts have a wealth of tutorials online that should get you through the most commonly encountered problems. Stripe has a reputation for taking security very seriously and appears to be well earned. Stripe is a certified PCI service provider level one, which means it meets the most stringent security standards in the industry. And Stripe uses HTTPS for all services using TLS SSL, even for their public website and dashboard. Credit card numbers are encrypted with decryption keys stored on a separate machine. That said, nobody's perfect. Stripe offers an incentive program to anyone who identifies a qualifying security related bug and reports it to Stripe's security team. Major bugs earn a minimum $500 reward. Lesser vulnerabilities may be rewarded with a minimum of $100. You might want to try your hand at hacking to earn some money. If you're still concerned about fraud, Stripe offers an advanced fraud detection service called Radar. Radar will probably be overkill for most businesses, but it uses machine learning to predict the likelihood that any particular transaction is fraudulent by factoring in data from your business and information Stripe has about the card being used. Radar is free with accounts paying the standard Stripe fee or as a four cent per transaction add-on. You can also buy chargeback protection for a 0.4% fee per transaction. You can also utilize standard fraud prevention tools like Stripe's address verification service and CVV checks. If you're considering Stripe over a more cost-effective solution, there's a good chance it's because you're interested in selling across international borders. Stripe markets itself as the premier payment services company for international business. And while its claim to the throne is debatable, it's definitely a contender. Stripe is available in 34 countries. What that means is it's available to merchants whose businesses are based in those countries, but it can accommodate over 135 different currencies. Better still, if the currency you're charging in differs from the customer's credit card currency, Stripe can convert the payment to your currency for a small fee based on daily mid-market exchange rates. You can avoid the whole currency conversion fee if you have a connected bank account that uses the credit card's currency. Another nice feature for international businesses is that Stripe allows you to display the cost of your products in the viewer's native currency. So even if your hipster barber business is based in New York, you can sell your whisker trimmers in pounds sterling in London. Finally, Stripe accepts a large number of payment types, including ones popular in foreign markets. We'll take a look at them in the next section. So Stripe supports a large number of payment types, making it a convenient choice for doing business in foreign markets. Stripe even takes the rare approach of supporting local payment types in addition to more common universal ones with a particular focus on types that are popular in the EU and China. Stripe Payments API supports the following universal payment types, which are supported in all markets. That's Alipay, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Microsoft Pay, American Express Checkout, 
Master Pass by MasterCard, Visa Checkout, and WeChat Pay. Additionally, Stripe supports local payment types in the markets where they're popular. That includes ACH, Bank Contact, EPS, Gyro Pay, Ideal, Klarna, Multibanco, P24, SEPA, SEPA, Direct Debit, so for many payment services, whether due to security concerns, legal concerns, or moral convictions, won't work with every industry. And Stripe, it turns out, is no different. Because Stripe is a third-party processor, meaning it aggregates all of its clients into a single merchant account, it's taking on a bit more risk than if each customer had their own merchant account. If you're in a problem industry and still need to accept credit cards, you may want to consider getting a merchant account from a company like Payment Cloud instead. So the first high risk or problem industry that Stripe will not do business with is entities that sell illegal products or services without exception. So you can't sell your drugs through Stripe. Beyond that, Stripe's restrictions are a little soft. You may be able to plead your case to Stripe to get them to make an exception for you. Stripe restricts a number of different activities, including financial and professional services, IP infringement, regulated or illegal products and services, unfair, predatory, or deceptive practices, and products or services restricted by Stripe's financial partners. They also don't like to see Stripe used in a manner inconsistent with intended purposes or in a manner prohibited by its Stripe services agreement. For a more complete list, see the article that I've dropped down in the description below. Stripe is a great option for businesses that do a lot of e-commerce, want the best security the industry has to offer, and do business across international borders. If you're a programmer or have one on your team, Stripe also provides some of the best developer tools in the payment processing industry, period. The prefab integrations aren't quite as exciting, but they're serviceable if you need access to Stripe's features. That said, Stripe can be overkill. It's not the cheapest option, and you can't just use it as a gateway. You get a lot of services for your money, but it's very possible, perhaps even likely, that you won't even need to use all of them. And like all third-party payment processors, it comes with a heightened risk of unexplained account holds and freezes. If you like what Stripe has to offer, but are a little overwhelmed by its scope, check out our Stripe alternatives. I've linked them in the description below. And if your industry is not served by Stripe, you can find a payment processor that works with your business among our favorite online payment gateways and credit card processors. Again, linked in the description below. And that does it for today's video. If you liked it, please hit that like button. Leave your comments down below. We answer every comment. And until next time, thanks Mavericks.